Pull. Oh my goodness! Full com. Oh! What is up, guys, and welcome to the Beyond Sanity. And my name is Shanks. And today we are going to cast a replay on the most famous map, Forts of Eisen, in Battle for Middle Earth 1 on the patch 1.06. Between the Red Rohan player Bogdan, his opponent, the Blue Mordor player Noldor. The hardest matchup for the Mordor faction, hands down, um, on the patch 1.06 at least. This used to be almost an impossible to win matchup. When you play Mordor against, against Rohan, it was very tough, you know? Because early peasant spam is very powerful, Rohan has access to a very early stable, much cheaper than the Gondor stable. Your units from the stable are also cheaper in compared to the Gondor Knights, which means Mordor cannot really get to the mid to late game power spike against early factions like Rohan. And if Rohan plays properly, you know, it's tough. It's tough, but it's not impossible. Okay, so Mordor's goal. It's a very interesting opening, to, you know, with like a furnace opening. Normally you see slaughterhouses. And because of that, he will not be able to build this right off the bat. So we have like a 1v2 situation. We have also Gollum coming to this location to spot the orcs. That is also Hobbit coming, Meriadoc, Brandybuck. I will be used. It's the only good thing in this matchup for Mordor, because Mordor can use Eye of Sauron. You don't have to go for the land, because Rohan has to pick draft at the beginning of the game. And has no counter to your Eye of Sauron. I mean, he can try to not fight, he can try to run away, but remember, Gollum is way faster than Swartman. Only the Urukai can catch up to Gollum. He's faster than Orcs, he's faster than Peasants, and also faster than Soldiers of Gondor. Rohan is preparing to creep. It's like um, a non-traditional style of the Rohan faction player, because normally what you want to try to achieve is to deal economical damage. But, you know, sometimes it's good to do unexpected stuff. So he's gonna be able to creep this non-contested, of course. He will eventually go for a very early stable and try to get to Rohirrim on the field ASAP. Easy creeping action, no problemo. One of them is gonna get level 2. Massive power spike early game. And we have a double furnace after the Orc pit into the Haradrim Paris. To be honest, I like that. Because... Radrim Palace gives the Mordor player the option to not play very passively until you finally get the money to go for the Troll Cage. Remember, Troll Cage costs you 1200 and the Trolls, they cost 1000 each, pretty much. And for that reason, until this is gonna happen, you will have to be stuck in your base because your Orcs, they don't stand a chance against Prohirim. Rohirrim are gonna trample them every single time. And Haradrims will give you the chance to creep, will give you the chance to fight for the outpost control, and then later on, you will also be able to recruit the soldiers of Rune, which are acting like a pikeman. And Mordo was also able to creep this, and he's gonna try to creep this one at the same time. So, oh, poor Golo. <laughs> Smeagol. No way. Rohan is coming. One of them has to be level 2, right? There. Only one unit remaining from the battalion, though. But still able to creep. I mean, you cannot kill the Varks. That's not possible. But you can get the creep and the money. And that's why he will sacrifice those orcs just to get the treasure, you know, from the ground. If the first Haradrim, Haradrim are also pretty good against Swartman. So they can, you know, bully and one-shot those peasants. Mary back in the business. The first Rohirrim is already out on the field. He's gonna try to destroy this. But I think this table is a little bit too late. Because look at the eco from Mordor. He has a full base almost already. Yeah, he will have a full base by the time the first mill is gonna be destroyed. Um, I think Rohan is kind of unintentionally creating a monster, you know, because I don't need to tell you how important the early game is when you play against Mordor, and you need to try to shut down Mordor early game, you know? Hobbit, Meriodok, Brandybuck! He's running for his life, and the orcs are, you know, as fast as the Hobbit, that means as long as the Hobbit keeps running away, you cannot catch him. Beautiful trample. But the problem is, you cannot trample those Haradrims really, because if you trample them, they are like a very weird unit. They have like a revenge damage. So they get one-shotted and they get trampled, but they also might one-shot you. So it's a very risky move and you don't want to take the risk. Why not? Because they cost only 240 each and your Rohirrim, they cost 420 each. So, you know, <laughs> it's not a good trade. This mill is going to be also destroyed. So as we are talking, Mordor has literally zero mills outside, but he has a full base. And the good thing about the furnaces, in compared to slaughterhouses, is in this patch they are way tankier. Like a level one 
Slaughterhouse has only 1500 HP, but the level 1 furnace has 3000, so oh my goodness. That's not the start you are looking for when you play Rohan against Mordor. He lost a full battalion of Rohirrim warriors. That's really bad. Mordor has actually a phenomenal time, you know? He has the time of his life. Oh my... No, please don't tell me. Okay. He was really close, actually. He's playing with fire, and that's not necessary. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to take those... Um, how can I say? You don't have to take those risky moves with Rohan. That's not needed. Because what you can do when you see a stuff like that, and that's the reason why Rohan is such a great counter to Mordor in almost every stage of the game. When you see Haradrim opening, what you can do is you can, uh, you know, wait for 3500 and you can just rush Aragorn. Aragorn in this patch, he's too tanky and just too strong generally. He is hitting like a crazy truck, you know. He is almost immortal. He can tank all these arrows from all these towers for ages, for minutes and minutes on end. And he can destroy buildings in a few seconds too. Like a like a overall best hero in every single situation. I mean, he cannot fly. <laughs> That's the only downside. He cannot get mounted too. But other than that, the tankiest hero with the highest DPS. That's why rushing Aragorn against Mordor is a very solid strategy, but Mordor has an outpost control now. So he will get additional money, Orc Pit 2, that's good. Because remember, the more Orcs you produce, the more, the more Orcs you end up losing, the more power points you will get. And a very huge power spike is the Industry, which he already unlocked and being used around these three furnaces. So Mordor is getting rich. But very soon we will have Aragorn on the field, I believe, right? Yeah, Aragorn is being recruited, the king of Gondor, fighting for Rohan. Pretty ironic. <laughs> and Rohan is trying to clean the map. So we have actually no more creeps left on the map for Horizon. Every single one of them has been crept by the players. And there are some runes. You don't want to fight against them. They are acting like a pikeman. They will hit you very hard. Like a hard counter system. So in the porcupine formation, they also deal bonus damage and being way more tanky against horses. So, you know, pretty much a 1v1 situation cannot be won against those units, unless you have like full level advantage, you have like, you know, bleeds, heavy armor and leadership, then maybe, but other than that, it's not possible. He's trying to micro around, Aragorn is on the field, Aragorn will be kind of kept, be, be kept busy around the outpost, you know, which will give more than enough time to react. So, Rohan has a lot of money, he has nearly 3000, he might actually go for Legolas too, um, and Mordor has also a great amount of money, so he's up to 3 key. Like a very early Nazgul can actually be super efficient to keep map control in your favor because yeah you cannot kill aragorn with a nazgul i mean you can but it will just take you too much time you know you know what i mean like aragorn is just too tanky <laughs> you know you need to hit him eventually like 100 times and during all this time he can just walk pay all the way back to the base to the well and has atelas has eventually heal from the spell book just too much recovery too much sustain you cannot fight with him you know <laughs> i mean it's pointless trying to kill him with one single nazgul because he's just too tanky but what you can do is you can kill Rohirrim and this way keep your mills protected. Because the weakness in this situation for Aragorn would be the lack of movement speed. I mean, a flying hero like a Nazgul is just the fastest unit in the game. And nothing and nobody can keep up with the speed. We have also Legolas on the field now. And I believe Mordor is gonna rush a Nazgul. Maybe at this point of the game it would be a wiser choice to rush Witch King, but it might be also too risky to wait for additional 3000 more. So, a Nazgul costs you 5,000, but a Witch King costs you 8,000. So, in this 3,000 more, it might be a little bit too risky. Because Aragorn won't stop here. He will just go inside your base now, you know? And he can easily take this down. You will see how strong he will become, boys. With Andrew's sword, which he has, the blue sword, you can see. And then also the Blade Master in combination. Good luck. Be careful. I like the rune spam. Very powerful, very strong for the map control, but... Keep in mind, one of the only weaknesses of the Haradrims and also the runes are heroes. And one of the strongest heroes, DPS-wise, is also Legolas. And the more levels this dude is gonna get, the more dangerous it's gonna become for the Nazgûls and also the Witch King later on. This guy with level 7, if you can catch the Witch King solo with the Arrow Wind, you can 100 to 0 him. So, you don't wanna give levels to, Arag to Legolas for no reason. And remember... Rohan has also access to the cheapest counter to the Nazgûls and Witch King, who is going to be the shield maiden of Rohan, Eowyn. 
can chunk them. Like uh, almost 70% damage to the Nazgul, 50% damage to the Witch King. Yeah, you see? One-shotting them. Literally. Level 3, Legolas. Um, outpost with units inside, but you need to get it to level 2 for the fire row. Very important. And, I mean, this Rohan... He's still behind, uh, let's be honest, because he needs still so much time, you know, he needs Armory, he needs Thurim, he needs Eowyn, he needs Fire Arrow, he needs ar uh, Heavy Armor, he needs Forge Blades, Bene Carrier, he needs, uh, you know, Rohirrim Arches, he needs so much. Look, dude, look, 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 Boo! Ho, 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 ho. that's the power of the Nazgul boys, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, people don't look pew chunking him. I'm telling you, boys. Look, where is Legolas when we need him? Like a hoax strike now, a sneaky one could be able to finish him off. But remember, the Nazgul can just recover over time. And you can always fly to the locations nobody can follow you. For example, you can literally send him... Uh, yeah, maybe on this map it's not a good example. Because there is not enough hiding places. But on a map like Dunhero, for example, you can pretty much put him in a place where nobody can reach to him, you know? And... Even if you can lose him, you can revive him for free, but keep in mind that losing him will give power points to your opponent, and also on top of that, it will just take you too much time. Because not the, the resources here are not the only resource in the game. Time is also very important in RTS games. Aragorn in the meantime, soloing the outpost like a madman. <laughs> Look, one-shotting. And he has also splash damage. He's the only hero with splash damage, by the way. I mean, it's not true. Boromir has also kind of splash damage, but... Not that strong, you know what I'm saying? He's so fast too. With the Andrew's Sword, he, get, he gets additional movement speed, 25% movement speed. So, without Andrew's Sword, he's gonna be slow. But with Andrew's Sword, he's gonna be as fast as Legolas. There are only three melee heroes, I mean four, who are as fast as them. So, we have Aragorn, Legolas from Rohan faction, and uh, Lourdes and Saruman from Isengard. Those four heroes are the fastest infantry heroes in the game. And then we have like... The fast ones like Gollum, for example. Then we have also Theorin, Boromir, Faramir. And the slowest one is Gimli. And Gandalf on foot. He's <laughs> also very slow. Okay, four power points in the bank. Rohan is kind of claiming map control with heroes exclusively. And Legolas getting more and more experience. Level 4 is a massive power spike, by the way. Because you can also level up your Rohirrim Arches later on. Witch King is here. Uh, that's a mistake from Witch King. You cannot... I mean, Witch King doesn't deal too much damage to heroes, by the way. He might die to Legolas, legit. Oh my goodness! Calculated, I believe. Calculated. Yeah. I mean, you need, you. there's like no reason to commit. Because now Witch King has to be sent back. And he was playing with fire. It's just too risky, you know what I'm saying? Look at this Rohan heroes. Legolas keep, you know, keeps attacking them all the time from a really long range. And every attack is hitting harder and harder. And the more levels he will get, the harder he's gonna get the chance to hit. Full map control for Rohan, only one settlement. If a siege works, troll kit situation. He has the Nazgul and the Witch King, and that's all he got so far. Uh, he needs desperately catapults and trolls and drummer trolls. If he wants to get the chance to defend himself. I mean, he went for the Devastation, which is pretty good early game. But again, every single step you take after the industry... In not going for the darkness will slow you down eventually later on to get to the Balrog power spike. So, you will now need additionally 4 power points because the Vestition cannot lead you to Balrog, you understand? So, you can now go for either Call the Horde or for the darkness, but then you can you need to still collect 20 power points on top of that to get to the Balrog. Let's see if heavy armor and not yet. And I'm going for towers too. The Nazgul on the hunt. When you see, he leveled them up. Level 2. And in the patch 1.06, the fear effects were completely useless. If <laughs> units would be level 2. And that's, that was always something which I thought is like really bad. You know what I'm saying? Because keep in mind that the only ability from the Nazgul's, including the Witch King, is Squeech. And the, the, the thing that you can shut it down completely by simply getting a level 2 unit or buying Banner... Which is the easiest thing in the world. I, I thought that's a bad thing, you know. Luckily we fixed it in the patch 2.22. Now the fear effects are able to affect them until they reach level 3. Okay, he covered the uh, Tainted Land. Very good. I mean, he has two catapults. 
in like two throws. I don't even know where they are. Okay, they are here with trees in their hands. Legolas almost level... He's level 5 now. Armory here for the heavy armor in leads. He already purchased the banner. Okay, so he's preparing for a push. But he want to wait for the heavy armor, which kind of makes sense. Aragorn is diving in. And the trolls without drummer troll... I don't think it's a good idea to commit against Aragorn. Aragorn is just too tanky, you know? It will take you too much time. And the only chance you have like against Aragorn in a situation like that is to knock him down on the ground. And remember, he has no darkness too. So he has only Witch King leadership as we are talking, which is not going to be enough. But he's thinking also all these... Uh, oh, 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 he's going to use heal and just run. You see how tanky he is? He was tanking all these towers shooting at him, including those two level 3 furnaces. Which is pretty strong, you know what I'm saying? Boom! And that's the weakness of the Rohirrim Arches boys. They are so vulnerable against fire, including the trebuchet or catapult damage from Mordor. Very, very powerful. Smart move from Mordor. He knows that the Nazgul cannot really approach this army of Rohan, so he want to use them to get a bit more map control. He was indeed able to get those two. Very important for Mordor to keep the spam with the catapults, because 480, but because of no slaughterhouses here, he needs to invest 1200 for each mountain throw. That's why the bonus are very, you know, effective and important. The drummer troll costs you 1300 resources. Can you imagine that? That's, a, that's more than many, many heroes in the game. Like, Lourdes is cheaper than a drummer troll. So is Faramir. So is Theorin. So is Eowyn. And of course, Gollum. And Peregrine took. And Mirror. Okay, I will stop. <laughs> okay. Um... Yeah, Legolas will kind of keep those units a little bit away because you don't, you can tank this a little bit, but you see the chunk, the combination is just too powerful. And also Eowyn's might will deal more damage the more level she will get. Mordor is desperately trying to get a bit more map control, trying to kill as many, you know, buildings as he potentially can and get power points collected. The decision is going to be used for the second time very soon. And he's in a camp situation. And that's the thing. Um, you will kind of find yourself in a situation like that all the time. And you are kind of trying to hunt power points. Because, uh, realistically speaking, you cannot really do much against Rohan at this stage of the game. What you try, what you can eventually do is you can try to get Darkness and then make combos. Now, Orcs, Orc Archers, all that good stuff. Um, he needs Drummer Troll. There is a Drummer Troll yet. Now you can fight him. Now you can fight him. Just fight him, yeah. Now you have 100% damage. Yeah, you see? Now we are talking. Now the trolls are raid bosses. You see the damage output? That's kind of crazy. But there is only one drama troll. You don't want to lose him. Run, run, run. <laughs> but in the meantime, the catapults are slaughtering the Rohirrim army. And unlike the Rohirrim with the shields, this Rohirrim archers are very vulnerable against arrows too. And they cannot tank this for a long time, you know? And where is Theorin? He has, okay, he's only level 1. And remember, he has no Eoma leadership. Aragorn has to be revived. And killing Aragorn gave Mordor so many power points. Now he has access to darkness, which is going to make those trolls bring, bring them to the strongest form. With the Witch King leadership, darkness, Eye of Sauron, and Drummer Troll, you cannot get any stronger. And they will become pretty much like a small Balrog version. They will be extremely tanky, but most importantly, they will get a chance to one-shot everything. So even an unkillable hero like Aragorn, who normally can tank any kind of damage, including the breath fire from Balrog for a long duration, cannot tank them for more than two seconds. And the trolls will smash them on the ground. And Legolas will get literally one-shotted if they will get a chance to hit the Prince of the Midwood Elves. And now, without Aragorn's leadership, and without Eowyn and Legolas being around, which King can hunt. Because remember, no man can kill him. Where is Eowyn actually? Did he lose? Him too, or her too. Okay, Hulk Strike. Level 5 still. And um, that's one of the weaknesses of the Rohan faction. Weaknesses. The weakness is obvious. The Rohan is not the best hitch faction in the game. You understand? Like, unlike, for example, Isengard who can go for explosive mines, for, for the Ballista, and Gondor for the Trebuchet, and Mordor for their own catapults, Mooma kills trolls, uh, Rohan has ants. And ants... Well, 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 they are not very good against fire. <laughs> so, two catapults can one-shot them. And in this version of the patch, the drummer troll gives also leadership to the catapults. So, it makes them more tanky and also make them deal way more damage. Okay, here's normal Rohirrim too. 
I think the winning situation for, for Rohan would be Glorious Charge. Like, he has full map control, he has a great amount of money. Maybe, yeah, I mean, he could even go for Gimli and or for Elma. I think Elma could be a nice choice, because you can somehow maybe manage, magically find a way to get him to level 4. Full commitment on the catapults. I want to see the power points. Aragorn. Yeah, you see? Well, well, well. <laughs> I mean, you cannot send Aragorn like that. That's not possible, you know what I mean? I mean, he's sacrificing a lot of units to kill the catapults. Yes, he killed every single one of them. But remember, with the full steel bonus he has from those furnaces, he needs to only invest 480 for every single one of them. So, he will have always enough money with the devastation, with the industry, to get more and more of them recruited. But what you... Oh, I am no man. Eowyn, the shield, Mason of Rohan. That's huge. Now, that opens like a cooldown window for the Rohan player. Now he has to do something. Because what, what happened now is he used darkness, which is going to turn off very soon, in about a minute. The darkness effect will be gone, and he lost the Witch King, who has like a really long revive time. And he killed a bunch of catapults too. He doesn't need to wait for Aragorn. I think he needs to move now. Like, when you play a multiplayer game in this game, you need to understand to play around the cooldowns. So you kill something, you want to commit on it you want to you want to punish your opponent for losing a certain hero for losing certain units and you know you don't want to give him the chance and the time most importantly to recover and to rebuild the stuff he lost and i think rohan has to be active now momentum speed and tempo very important combinations in this game to get you the w screen the victory screen instead of always a defeat screen now you gotta move now you need to move. I mean, he has six power points in the bank, but going for the ends could be, or would be kind of useless in my opinion, because not only the catapults, but also the trolls with this leadership can one-shot the ends. So I think he's gonna try to go for a, for a cloud break. He's sacrificing all his Rohirrim just to kill the catapults, but there is still one remaining. It's very hard, you know? <laughs> it's very hard. Because the problem is, the second the Rohirrim are going inside the castle, and they will be shot in the face by every single building in the base. And then, uh, there are also the Guardians, you know? The Trolls. He lost so many units. And Mordor is getting slow, slowly but surely closer and closer to the Baldrock Special Summon. Aragorn is back in the business for the third time. I mean, poor heroes, Merry, Gimli, and also this dude. I mean, Rohan cannot get any strong at this point, right? <laughs> what is Rohan supposed to do? Like, I mean, money-wise. Money is not important. But what is important is the Theodin leadership. With level 4 Glorious Charge, then you can make a move like that. Because then you can use Glorious Charge, send your normal units inside the base, because they will become much more tanky, and then try to kill as many catapults as potentially possible, and then, but only maybe, you might not lose every single Rohirrim doing that over and over again. Because losing a full battalion of Rohirrim will cost you so much money. So you need to invest 350 for that, 350 for that, 250 for that, 300 for that. 420 for the Rohirrim, you know, it's like around about a 1500, almost 2000 resources you need to invest for one single Rohirrim, and in the long terms it can hurt, because even though, look at that, even though Rohan has like legit full map control, he doesn't have that much money, I mean he has still 5k in the bank, but it could be much more, okay, I mean, <laughs> the definition of ins insanity, when you, when you do the same thing over and over again, but you are expecting a different result, you are kind of nuts, dude. What can I say? Oh, well, well, well. We are surprised, aren't we, guys? <laughs> we are surprised, aren't we? Who would have seen that coming? Let me please know in the comment section down below. Who would have seen that coming? Who was the Einstein... Who thought this is gonna happen i mean that's very unfortunate because reviving him will cost you two thousand and that's the third time he needs to revive him so two 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 six thousand had to be invested to revive this dude and three and a half thousand at the beginning so he invested ten thousand so far for his aragorn which is a lot of money but all aragorn did was to kill two catapults and then feed power points to mordor at this point of the game, I think Aragorn is kind of helping out Mordor more than the Rohan player. I'm not even kidding. Legolas hunting down those Nazgûls. 
um, I think the Rohan player does legit not know how to kind of get to get to win this. I think, um, like what I would do in a situation like that is I would just commit with two, three armies at the same time. Make sure that your eco advantage means something, because even though he has full map control, but he doesn't use any of this for his own advantage. If this makes sense for you guys, like in a small area, in those small pushes. The our outnumbered advantage doesn't mean anything. So Mordor is legit poor. He has less than 500. He, he just used the Vestation once again to get a bit more money, but that's pretty much it. So what you can do when you have such a big force, you can split them into two pieces. You attack from this location and from this location and make, force him to split his army. So him splitting the army is so much better for you than you splitting your own army for him, if this makes sense. I, I, I hope I can make myself clear, because he cannot like those trolls, when you have like two, three trolls on each side, they can be killed. But if they have like ten trolls in one location, it's very hard to defend against that. And also the Katas has to eventually move. So what you can do is you can attack from this location, and from this location, you can try to destroy this, and also the towers and fish power points. And because in in reality, let's be honest here, the only way to win the game for Rohan is if he gets the Balrog, um, the EOD summon. And he needs nine power points for that, right? And that should be your goal, because you can afford losing units, because you have such an insane eco and resource income. And as long as you can go one for one, like if you lose one Rohirrim Archer for one troll, it's so worth for you, because you have much more resource income than the Mordor player does. Because whatever he does doesn't really matter, the Mordor player will always get the Balrog sooner. But as he has map control, he will have the chains and the money to buy the castle back. So you want to go and fish power points. He went for the end summon, which is very interesting, but you can see them burning now. He healed them. Darkness has been used, the trolls are committing. But remember, the dra drama troll cannot keep up with the spam. That's not possible. Oh, Legolas. Yeah, yeah. That's why you need to move. <laughs> you gotta move. You see the ends are falling like nothing. They have legit no chance against those trolls. That's why Cloudbreak would be a much better choice. Because Cloudbreak can slow them down, so they cannot engage and disengage easily and on top of that also reducing their armor by 30 percent which is pretty good when it comes to kill them a bit faster i mean he has three power points now in the bank oh sorry he didn't went for the end special he went for the end mood that's what it is okay my bad <laughs> my bad i guess okay um the nazgul the second nazgul doing a phenomenal job by the way you know flying around the map being annoying killing farms left and right all that good stuff I think he didn't even bother reviving Aragorn for the third time anymore. I mean, even though he had the money for it. Like, Aragorn is not a bad hero, but I think you just cannot send him in blindly, you know what I'm saying? Because what you can do with Aragorn in the worst case scenario, you can keep him with your Rohirrim archers and give them additional damage leadership. That's the least you can do. Because with Tyrion combined with 50% damage and Aragorn 50% damage, they would have 100% additional damage and more importantly, 100% more combat experience. That means if you place Aragorn and Tyrion next to the Rohirrim archers, there is a higher chance for you to level up your uh, theory in way faster. Because remember, the leadership can be passively shared with your heroes. So as your units killing stuff with increased combat experience, the heroes nearby of your units can level up twice as fast. I have seen in many situations, in a 3v3 situation especially, hero like Aragorn being put to the army, getting from level 5 all the way to level 10 in like 10 seconds. That's legit possible in this game, but you need to kind of understand how to position yourself. Because it's just too late, and Mordor is way too powerful for Aragorn to be sent inside solo. It's mission impossible, but you don't have the agent hunt, agent hunt you know what I'm saying? So you don't want to do that. Degolas trying to chase the Witch King, but Witch King is just too fast. Ooh, the chunking though. I think the vestation was so valuable for for Mordor too. He got so much money off it. I mean, he oh he lost the siege works. It's good um, because it will slow down the production speed of the units. Fifty percent faster production speed when it's level three. Hyorin is almost level four. Will he get there? He, he went even for three beard. The last march of the ends begins. What can we call this video later on for the YouTube channel, guys? I'm curious. Should we call it Camp to Win or Camp to Tilt? Hold on a second. Eowyn! Oh, she doesn't have this mine. Okay, I was like, why, why is she not using it? 
I think she used it against the Witch King or something, or against this Nazgul. Now, at this point, he has three flying heroes, and that's very dangerous, you know? I mean, he has great counter to that, but still. How many catapults does he have? One, two, three, four, five catapults. But more are coming very soon. Uh, yeah, <laughs> plenty of trolls, drummer troll, two of them, three of them, two of them, right? That's very important too, because they can give leadership to each other. So they can make each other a bit more tanky. And here's darkness available too. Yeah, almost in about 20 seconds. Now we have three beards. Three beard actually gives a crazy buff to the ends and very underrated hero. Um, because he can make them shoot from a far distance. So 20% more range will literally give them the chance to shoot off screen. So, as you can see, this is Fog of War for Mordor. He doesn't see what is going on. And the ants can now shoot from off screen. You see? they don't. Uh, the Mordor player doesn't even see them at this point. Because of the increased range from 3 bit leadership. But their damage output is not the greatest. So you want to have additionally more of them. And you need to kind of dodge. But that's the one thing ends are not really good at. They cannot really dodge because they are moving in slow motion speed. And the catapult shots are just too fast for them to move aside. The Nazgul's in the meantime keep doing this stuff. Full com- Oh, The catapult shot! You don't want to be clumped like that, dude! Uh, the power points are rising to the sky. And uh, he went for the, for the uh, cloud break to slow them down. But as you can see, the catapults are just too powerful. And you can see how tanky these are. You need three hits from the end to kill one catapult because they get the additional leadership from the drummer troll too. One of the trolls has been taken down, but for what price? I think he lost Legolas once again. No, he didn't lose Legolas, but he lost um, a lot of his Rohirrim arches. Legolas is only level 6. Yeah, he, he's powerful, but not even Legolas can do against uh, stuff against such a reckless seed because there is just too much leadership available for the trolls. They are just too tanky. You cannot, even though you are making them weaker effectively with the Cloud Break, but you know, think about the damage leadership you, they will get. 50% more damage and armor from the Drummer Troll, same from the Witch King, and also the 50% armor from the Dark. So they have 150% more armor, <laughs> which is like, think about it. You know what I mean? It's like crazy. You need to understand how crazy these numbers are. You basically take 150% reduced damage. So if they would deal to you 10 damage, which is like a solid damage in this PFME game, all of a sudden they would deal less than one damage per attack. But your health is remaining. You have still 2000 health with the, with the trolls. So it's like an effective health versus increased damage reduction. This is kind of crazy, you know? 17 power points, 3 power points away from the Balrog, and uh, Rohan still needs 6 power points for the EOD. I think that's the time when you need to realize, okay, you know what? I can do nothing to win this game without my EOD. So I will commit fully, try to get as many power points as I potentially can. So what you can do is you can force him in a loud fight and then have like another army to approach and crush the building while he's busy crushing your army. But Mordor is also getting very strong now, you know? Like he's using only 50, less than 50% of his population. You understand? Like he has double the chance of getting a stronger army because in this game in the patch 1.06 and that's the reason why we worked on the patch 2.2 that hard to make it more balanced the catapults they cost only five command points do you understand you can literally spam them all for ages they cost six times less command points than orcs and orcs are for free so you can spam them a troll costs you only 10 command points in this game in this patch one of the strongest units in the game. A Rohirrim costs you 50% more command points in compared to Orc, but uh, in compared to a troll. And keep in mind that the evil factions in this game have double the command points in compared to the good factions. So 200 command points versus 400 command points. So in the late game potential, the, the army Mordor can get on the field with 400 command points versus your 200. You cannot mess with that. You know what I mean? Like you can legit get 20 trolls, 5 drummer trolls, and then like 20 catapults on top of that. And you will still not be command points kept. Kinda busted. <laughs> That's why we changed a lot of that stuff in the patch 2.2. The patch 1.06 was not a bad patch, but it was just outdated. And some units wouldn't make any sense. For example, the catapult and trebuchet. They were like high reward, by, but no risk. Like, killing catapults would give you little to zero experience in this game. And now it's more punishing when you lose them. He went for another end mood, by the way, from this location. He's trying his best to get to do stuff like, <laughs> look, he's coming from the top side with the ends, 
is coming from the bottom side with the ants, but those ants have zero protection, that means the Witch King and the Nazgul could commit on them and eventually take them down. Boom. Um, I think that's gonna be the time when we see... Oh, big commitment. Oh my goodness, he's gonna get Balrog, right? Yeah, Aragorn is diving in, yeah, Aragorn got killed in a second. Doesn't stand a chance, the ants are burning. And now we have reached the power point in which we will see the Balrog, the demon of the ancient world. And Rohan still needs five power points for his own Offbreaker army, and I don't think he will get it anytime soon. He just lost majority of his army. Eowyn, Shield Maiden, almost getting killed by Catapults. And you see, Catapults would literally one-shot almost heroes too. Eowyn is a hero who got almost three-shotted by Catapults. So we nerfed their damage also against heroes. Balrog has been special summoned. Going ham. Also very powerful creature in this game, in this patch. No counterplay, <laughs> you can't do anything against him. The only way you can kill him is with AOD, but... Doesn't have AOD. I mean, with the help of the Nazgûls, but... Realistically, you don't even need the help of the Nazgûls, because the Balrog is indeed able to finish off this base all alone. And that's a lot of money damage um, Rohan will receive. Yes, he has the money to actually rebuy the castle, but keep in mind, please, that every single structure he will build inside the castle, once he's purchasing it, will be level 1. So you cannot replace those level 3 stable, level 3 farms, which are giving you much more money in compared to level 1. Now you might say, but Shanks, money is not a problem for this Rohan, but trust me, it will be. Trust me, it will be. Because as long as you have no sustain in your eco, and you keep losing stuff like he does, he is investing so much money into more ends, into reviving all the heroes he's losing all the time, and uh, losing Rohirrim Arches, he will eventually run out of money very soon. Because uh, Mortal Player is actively with his Nazgûls fighting for map control. I mean, he lost both of them, but still. Six power points in the bank. Um, <laughs> I think now you need to understand, okay, time is not in my favor. That's, that's what the Rohan player has to understand. Okay, I gotta make a move now. I need to fight... Even if I lose more than I kill, because if I wait and do nothing, then he will just wait it off for the next Balrog and he will kill my castle again. And then he has even the chance now with this army of trolls and catapults at the bottom side to commit against my outpost. So I will lose my outpost and my castle once again, and then I will have only one outpost to keep me alive. And I cannot have the money always to rebuy the full castle over and over again. We will eventually be broke. I think what the Rohan play needs to be doing is build another stable here and even another stable here and keep producing units. Keep losing them, but keep trying to get power points. That's your win condition. And that's the reason, boys. I always keep saying you don't want to give Mordor too much time to get into the late game. Because Mordor camping, you see how important and how effective this is. This is even more difficult to deal with for Rohan in compared to a Gondor camper, you know? Because Gondor has no trolls protecting those trebuchet all the time. The outpost will be sieged, and there is no defense. He's trying to commit, but I don't think this army will be enough to defend against this army. There are too many trolls to protect those catapults. If you move, they will hunt you. If you don't move, catapults can like one-shot you. And Mordor is getting more power points collected. He has the Cloud Break, but remember Mordor has darkness, so he can pretty much use it. And Cloud Break does do nothing against Mordor, because Mordor units cannot be stunned. Monsters in this game are immune to withstand. Which also is fixed in the patch 2.2. <laughs> okay. The Witch King, only here to provide leadership. You want to keep him alive no matter what. He didn't even revive his Aragorn yet, but he's going to be on his way very soon. The outpost will be given up. Looks like he doesn't want to even bother defending this. Oh boy, <laughs> dude. Look, the Balrog is almost back up already. You understand? That's why, what is the Rohan player doing? I'm, I mean, I, I get it. It's tough, it's hard, it's, it's kind of frustrating to fight against this many catapults. I would be tilted myself. That's why I will never intentionally leave more than a chance to get to this power spike. And get this annoying camp situation. Six power points, he's trying to kick... You want to kill these towers, by the way. Because they are giving you the most power points. One troll has been sniped. Second troll has been sniped. Does he have Glorious Charge? Nope, not yet. The outpost has been destroyed and will be claimed now by the Mordor player, uh, Noldor. 
Rohan is B-Link, hit and run. That's a, that was a good move. Now you gotta do that over and over again. Because Balrog is avoidable in about 10 seconds. You understand why we nerfed the Balrog cooldown? You understand why we made it so Balrog has 2 minutes more cooldown in the patch 2.22 versus the patch 1.06? Now hopefully you do understand. Because you being able to kill the bees. Look, he bought the bees right after the Balrog destroyed. And now the, the farms couldn't even get level 2. That's how fast the Balrog recharge, you understand? <laughs> That's kind of crazy if you've asked me. And Rohan has again the money or still the money to buy the castle, but he will have only be, he will only be able to do that one last time. Oh, he just entered his catapult for no reason. I think all the mortal player needs to do is move this giant army of trolls and catapults to this top outpost. Yeah. Just all you gotta do. He went for the scavenger too. That means money, money, money. Every time he kills stuff, the the base is gonna be definitely destroyed. There is no chance. And what will Rohan do? That's the big one million dollar question. I mean, he has still map control. That's good. Mordor is just too careful. I think. Maybe, I mean, he doesn't know what we know. Like, he doesn't know how close the Rohan play is to the, to the EOD summon. He knows, though, that EOD is going to be the game-winning move. So the base has been recaptured for the second time. <laughs> it's kind of crazy, dude. But you see? Oh, you see? That's what I'm talking about, boys. Never say never. Never say I have enough money. You will never have enough money. Trust me on that one. He's poor. He's fully poor now. He cannot even re you know, recruit more units and upgrade them. He's broke. But here's Aragorn. He has lots of units on the field. And level 8 Eowyn. I mean, also, um, hero, we don't get the chance to see very often level 8. I think the last time I saw it, I saw Eowyn level 8 was when I was playing the good campaign. <laughs> so it's been a long time. Okay, so he want to move slowly. He want to take down the outpost first, which will be given up. But I think Mordor will eventually go for a swap situation, like for a trade situation. Trade one outpost and get another one. Okay, the Nazgûs, they keep harassing the economy from Rohan over and over again. He has only farms inside, he will be building towers. But again, look, the Balrog is already halfway there. So it's a matter of time. He will get the chance to summon Balrog eventually for the third time before you get your own, Bald own AOD for the first time. You need to be fast. Tempo. Speed. Oh... Catapults, one of them has been taken, you see plus 10, plus 10 from the scavenger, plus 5, depends on the units you kill, depends on the hero you kill, you get more or less money. Um, Mordor has still defense in the base, you know, it's not like he, he, he's smart, he never leaves the base open completely for a potential attack, he has still 4 catapults, like 4 trolls, 1 drummer troll, while moving out, and that's what I was trying to say early game, earlier, and still, like, he's not even using... Like 60% of his population limit. He can get still a lot of units on the field. His outpost has zero protection. The Nazgûls will be able to take it down. Full commitment. One troll has been sniped down. The second one is going down as well. But the catapults are hitting like a truck. And plus 10. Boom, boom. You see the catapult shots. It hurts my eyes to see those Rohirrim arches falling like they are nothing. Aragorn, the king of Gondor, is diving in once again. He doesn't learn from his mistakes. He doesn't know when to stop. And when to stop inting. He will get killed for 210 resources from the scavenger of you know, Mordor. Nine power points, he still needs one more. The outpost top will be defeated, destroyed by the trolls, and the outpost bottom has been destroyed by the Nazgûls. Now, we have a situation I was trying to tell you earlier. Look at the money from Rohan. He is now has less than a thousand. He doesn't even have enough, enough money to build up the stable. That's all the army he got. He got like two Rohirrim arches with Legolas, Eowyn, and Theorin. That's all he got, right? He doesn't even have a stable anymore. <laughs> he can recruit if he wants to peasants, but that's all about it. And Mordor, all of a sudden, has a lot of money. He will make more money in long terms because evil factions have more money boosting abilities anyway, like scavenger, you know, industry, devastation, and all that stuff. But also, his Balrog will be summoned for the third time before Rohan will get the chance to summon his own AOD for the first time. So, now I believe what needs to be done is. You, I mean, does he have the. I mean, he lost the Witch King and the Nazgul, okay. 
I think he needs to try to protect his outpost somehow. With like two catapults, three trolls, one drama troll. And destroy this outpost simultaneously. Like as you do that, you need to simultaneously summon your Balrog and destroy. You need to go for a victory now at, at this point. And yeah, that's gonna be the lead, lead camp power uh, potential from Mordor. But you see how Mordor is playing way differently against Rohan than it's against Gondor. Against Gondor is so much easier to play as Mordor. Be because your trolls can literally run them run on everything. The only the only time Mo Gondor can outplay you is when he has the Eagle Summon. But until this, you can just run him down, you know, with this leadership. Smite, I am no man. Aragorn against... Will we see Aragorn against Balrog? Aragorn is like, hell no, I'm out of here. <laughs> He's the observer. You wanna, you wanna see how Rohan falls. Where was Gondor when Forts of Eisen fell? Yeah, the beast is gonna be destroyed. There is no chance. You cannot fight against Balrog. It's not possible. I'm kind of tilted though. I mean, I'm kind of a little bit disappointed by the Rohan player. He was having a phenomenal game, but I think he just started to be a bit too scared. And stopped playing the game offensively. And he will, you know, cancel this to get the 1000 back. And now, for the fourth time, he has no money to buy it back. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Aragorn will be sent to the outpost of right to destroy it. The only thing that keeps Rohan alive as we are talking is the outpost at the bottom left with zero protection. Yes, is stable. He needs to make a choice. Do I make units or do I try to save for 5,000 to buy this? Like you need both. You need the castle and you also need units because he has one, two, um, two Rohirrim arches only and, and two normal Rohirrim. That's all he got. Mordor has like, Mordor didn't even unleash the power yet, you know? Mordor is about to unleash his full potential and go all out against the Riddermark. Yeah, boys, lead game Mordor. Um, that's because Rohirrim Arches are hard countering to Mordor faction. That's why Mordor needs catapults. It sounds slim, I know, but um, you cannot just go for trolls and hope for the best. That's not possible. Because Rohirrim Arches are like rangers on horse. They have the chance of hitting and running away. Trolls, when they charge, they can catch up to every single infantry unit in the game. Even They can even catch Uruks, which are the strongest and the fastest. But they cannot keep up with the speed of the cavalry. That's not possible. That's why Rohirrim Arches are such a great counter to Trolls and Moomer Kills and even Nazgul's and Witch King. EOD finally. Finally, dude. Oh, man. That's so tilting. But he has no money, man. That's the problem. All trolls are going down. Leadership is meaning, meaningless against AOD special summon. But even AOD is limited because the Nazgul and the Witch King are immune. As long as you don't attack the AOD, AOD cannot attack them back. Yeah. I mean, he's waiting here, by the way, with Legolas just to get the money for 5,000. But I think by the time he gets 5,000, Balrog is going to be only a quarter away from getting special summon for the fifth time. It's kind of unbelievable. It's like a back and forth story. and uh, But I believe now Rohan has the chance to win this. It, even though it sounds crazy, but I think Rohan has the chance to win this. I think when I would be Rohan player, what I would be doing is I would not invest money into this one. Which is kind of pointless, because now you need to understand. When I buy this, you will get the chance to summon Balrog in a bit. Right? In a bit. So... Or maybe you need to buy it. I don't know, man. <laughs> because if you don't buy it, Balrog can be summoned at the outpost. And then you lose both the outposts too. And you lose the game. So you have to kind of buy it knowing that you will lose it. <laughs> That's kind of crazy, man. It's like a awkward situation. You win? Yeah. I am no man. Does he have heal? Yeah, he has heal. He should be good. Screech? Yeah, boy. Oh, oh, Legolas got level 7, by the way. He has now the arrow wind. And Rohan is still almost full map control. That's good. And he lost uh, two Nazgûls. He has only the Witch King remaining on the field. And Witch King you need to be careful with. So he bought the beast for the fourth time. Um, fourth Eolinga's time. Balrog is going to be available in a bit. Maybe you should not invest any money into building stuff here, by the way. Um, what you can do is you can build statues. And there is a specific reason why. 
because the hitbox of the statues are way, is way smaller in compared to farm. So there is a chance if the Balrog using breath fire that he might miss your statues because of the hitbox, you know? Like a farm, for example, is like a giant hitbox, you know what I'm saying? A stable tool, even a well. But a statue is like a very tiny building and you need to at least hit a part of the building with the breath fire to damage it. That's why in some games, eventually when you played with me in the past in multiplayer, you, when you see somebody summoning Balrog, you saw the other player kind of demolishing buildings and replacing them with statues, and that's the main reason for that. Because statues have like, in compared to any other building, a way smaller hitbox. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> the Balrog. Oh, oh, it was close actually, dude. Holy crap, I'm only. It's really close. Um, Balrog keeps doing his stuff. Aragorn <laughs> can't touch this, dude. He can't, he can't touch this. Trust me on that one. Is Bal this guy is so weak, too. He's not level 4 yet. Aragorn is going to be smashed. Cloud break. Uh, catapults hitting like a truck. EOD still needs over a quarter. And in the meantime, this base is going to be destroyed fully. And he has even called a horde, which he can't use because he has no orbit. I mean, he can use it, but it won't affect anything. And Mordor has... Like, you see the power, economy power of the evil factions like Mordor in Isengard, especially Mordor in this situation, in a campy situation. Um, you have always enough money to get one catapult and one troll. Like, you need around about 1700 for one of them at the same time, simultaneously. And you will have enough money with all your level 3 furnace anyway. But then, on top of that, you can even save money because of your industry for additional 300% resource boost because it works 100% but on 3 of them 100, 100, 300% and you know, you have devastation every couple of minutes for like 1500 resource income you know, pretty much instantly and then you have also scavenger later on oh, he could, what? he couldn't destroy it? I think Rohan will be able to save that Elvin is coming and Witch King has to disengage yeah, that's what? I'm very confused right now. <laughs> How? Mordor has 6,000 in the bank. AUD is available. But the problem, and I believe that's the real problem here, that Rohan has, he has no army. That's the problem. Like, ideally, what you want to do is you want to you wanna attack the base and force him to defend, and then you want to use EOD, and then you want to have an army later on to destroy the base fully. Because EOD doesn't deal too much damage to the buildings. It will you, EOD cannot finish off the base solo, that's not possible, right? So you need some sort of follow-up. Trolls are charging in, Theodine still not level 4. I mean, Mordor lost literally all his army. He's gonna drop down to 57 out of 400 command points, but he has enough money to actually keep building stuff. He will have the two Nazgûls back on the field very soon. The outpost will be destroyed eventually. The, the you know, say it. The castle is still remaining on the field. And the Witch King is still remaining too, but he needs to be careful. The Nazgûls are here. The AOD time is, time is gone. And the Balrog is going to be available for the, for the next uh, couple of minutes. I think that's going to be the fifth Balrog summon we're going to see in one single game. It's like one of the longest games I've actually casted in a one-on-one -on -one situation in the map Fort of Eisen, at least. I mean, we have seen other long games in a map like Westfold with like plenty of uh, potential battle arenas with like four outposts and giant, ginormous map size. But Fort of Eisen, it has to be one of the one of the longest games I've casted actually. And hopefully, you guys are still here. Let me know actually if you are still listening to me. And let me know the minute mark, you know, in the comment section down below. I'm curious if you are still here. <laughs> if you still see the fiesta, what I'm able to see here with my own eyes. And I don't know. I don't know who's going to win. Because Rohan is still the upper hand, in my opinion. He has still great amount of map control. But AOD is going to take a lo little bit longer time to be back up in compared to the Balrog. And you see the importance of these two Nazgûls and the Witch King. They are very effective for, for the map control fights. Rohan has rebuilt the base once more time, but he's dropping down to less than a thousand resources. He has all the power points unlocked from the spellbook, including the end ally special summon. The Nazgûls are coming, 
um, but they will be forced to disengage. And you see, the Nazgûls are kind of forcing the Rohan player to invest that much money into the battle towers. They cost 800 each. So that's like 2400 for the three towers all alone. You need to invest just because of the existence of the of the Nazgûls. Uh oh, smite, smite! Oh, he, he, he's dead. I am no man. Phew, Elvin. Elvin, the Nazgul Slayer. I think she has shown his, her quality, unlike her husband, <laughs> Faramir. And I'm kind of feeling bad, though. Even in a non-Gondor game, I'm always finding a way to flame the poor Faramir. Okay, he's going for it, boys. Wow, backfly. Boom, son. Boom, son. Balrog. The demon of the ancient world. Ooh, breath. I'm wondering what would actually happen if you would replace them with statues, but I think it wouldn't change too much because the Nazguls are here to support anyway. With the help of the Witch King and the Nazgul, the Balrog should have, like, zero trouble to finish off the beast. And Mordor is moving at the same time to the outpost. Rohan has reclaimed the bottom outpost. And Balrog uh, AOD is going to be available in a bit. But I think it's going to still take a while. So, now Rohan is far away from getting to the point in which he can rebuy this. He even lost his Legolas, by the way, for the first time. And Legolas, all alone, is going to cost him all the money he got collected. And Mordor has the money and the chance to buy this. Theoden King is finally level 4. Has finally the Glorious Charge. The outpost has been destroyed. Rohan has still a great amount of map control, and I think Mordor has to find a solution to that. What I would be doing instead here for Mordor, I would just replace one of my furnaces with an orc pit, use Call the Heart, um, you know, use it effect effectively, and then send orcs to every single farm. And just to be annoying. Because this level 3 farms, and he has like many of them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 level 3 farms he has on the field. They are kind of keeping Rohan a little bit alive in the game. The end summon will be used. Um, I think it's a mistake because when you summon ends like that, you should be waiting a little bit longer for the army of the dead. You know what I mean? Like when you summon EOD, to, you kill all the trolls and the catapults, then you summon the ends and then you can deal heavy damage. But when these catapults are still remaining on the field, your ends, they cannot really do much. Rohan will be buying the base yet one more time. It's like a never-ending love story. <laughs> EOD will be summoned. Catapults are getting destroyed. So Mordor is an outpost and a base. Rohan is an outpost and a base. But the base of Rohan is not looking very strong. It's going to be only level 1 buildings for the next couple of minutes. There comes the full commitment uh, with the EOD. But you can see their damage output against buildings is meh. So a level 3 troll cage is just too tanky for them to be destroyed. A siege fork in this game doesn't get too much HP boost when it's level 3, it's only at 4500 HP, but also in the patch 2.22 every single production building with level 3 is gonna have the same HP now, every single one of them is gonna have 3000 HP with level 1, 4500 with level 2 and 6000 with level 3, it goes for the good factions and also for the evil factions. Two ends, they can't finish off this, um, he lost both the Nazgûls by the way, there is only the Witch King remaining, and Witch King fighting against elven warriors. He used Screech to scare them away. And if the Rohan... Nah, he can't. If he could be able to destroy this, it would slow down the Nazgul a lot. I mean, Rohan is kind of poor, and Mordor is kind of weak. He has zero out of 400 command points available. Zero. Like, he has legit no units on the field. The only one he has is the Witch King, and he doesn't cost command points. There comes the Elven. She might be able to use the Smite. But again, Smite all alone is not going to kill him. Uh, Balrog is going to be available way, way sooner than the EOD. But in the meantime, the full commitment with the Glorious Charge. This is going to be the one push to get the victory finally. Rohan full map control. has been patient with the map control. And that's one of the one of the major reasons why Rohan is in the game. And that's I think that should be like the proof of importance. The question, how important is the map control? And map control is literally everything in this game. And you should never say, dude, I have enough money, I don't care about this one farm. Because it's not only about the money you get, it's about the money you deny your opponent to get, you know? And that's the reason why Rohan was able to buy the castle for five times, back to back to back to back to back, after losing it, over and over again. 
The Witch King is gonna be used to kill the outpost, the Citadel, but Rohan is recovering money-wise. Those level 3 farms are providing him so much additional resources. He's backing off for now. And Mordor doesn't want to give up. He want to keep recruiting more and more units. Call the Heart is absolutely useless. He didn't make orcs at all since pretty much 25 to... Uh, how long is this game, actually? I'm guessing it's over an hour long, I think, at this point. Oh, Elvin! Pew! Elvin is getting grilled. <laughs> okay, the Balrog of Morgoth for one more time. And I think the beast is going to be destroyed one more time. And Rohan will eventually have the chance to buy it again for a sixth time. I cannot imagine myself playing this game, you know what I mean? I would, I think, get crazy at this point. <laughs> but in either case, if I would play Rohan or Mordor, I would just lose my mind. But I appreciate the fact that the players are not giving up. They fight until the end, because the W screen, the, the victory screen is so important to get. Especially when you have suffered that much, you know what I mean? Like when you imagine you play like an hour game and then you lose. It, it feels like you lost 10 games in a row, you know what I mean? Like this is very important to get a victory. Mordor is kind of <laughs> playing very offensively for the outpost and for the castle, but he kind of ignores the fact that Rohan has just too many level 3 farms outside, which are eventually open for a potential attack. Like, destroy them, and you will see Rohan won't be able to rebuild the castle after you destroy it with your next Balrog. Okay, uh, the Rohan army is not looking very strong either. So he has one normal Rohirrim, two Rohirrim archers, with Tyrion level 4 and Eowyn level 10. He doesn't even have um, Legolas or Aragorn on the field for a long time now. But again, I'm, I keep saying it all the time because it's very important. The level 3 farms are the reason why Rohan is not defeated yet. And Mordor is literally zero buildings. Oh, that, hey, I'm telling you, if the Nazgul and the Witch King can destroy the castle fully, it might be GG. Yeah, Rohan cannot give this up. He needs to now go all the way back to the castle. EOD is going to be available soon. And guys, I need to tell you one game-breaking thing in this game. And you will be surprised about hearing that. And when we started to, to code the patch 2.22 for BFME 1, and we took a look into the codings, we realized, and that will shock you, sit down a minute, grab something to drink, and don't choke when I'm telling you, you know? Because it, it was blowing my mind. When we took a look into the codings of the game, we have realized that the end summon has longer cooldown than the army of the dead summon. Can you imagine that? It was driving me crazy. I've played this game for many, many years, and I've never ever noticed that myself. Because I didn't even bother going for the ends. It's, it's one of the worst power points in the game. But I didn't know and realize that the end summon has longer cooldown than the army of the dead. And that was one of the first things we have changed. And we have found so many different bugs and nonsense, nonsense stuff about the patch 1.06, which we have tried to fix. And again, the patch 2.22 is an actively developed version and patch of the game BFME 1. And we, are, we keep working on it all the time. And for me personally, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a veteran BFME player. I've been playing this game for many, many years. For me, that's the best patch ever made. I'm not saying it because I'm involved into that. I'm saying it because it is the truth, you know? You have the new farm. Okay. Mordor has captured the outpost. EOD is available, ends are available. Okay, this is gonna be the one push to win them all. Okay, Mordor's smart player, by the way. Look, he's hiding his stuff, you see that? That's so smart, actually. It's so smart. But the problem is you cannot run away from the EOD. EOD can catch up to every single infantry unit in the game. Hero, unit, everything. Smart move, focusing down this citadel. What? The damage output is kind of meh from the ends, if I'm being honest. It's, it starts rebuilding, that's how slow they are attacking it. Yeah, the Citadel is just too tanky. In the meantime, the Nazgul and the Witch King, they kind of try to destroy the castle without the need of the Balrog. Balrog is going to be available very soon. And that's a very smart move, 
Because what Mordor player is trying to achieve here is you want to destroy this castle without the Balrog and then summon the Balrog to destroy the last remaining outpost to get the victory. But can he do that? Because he's about to lose his old full castle. He lost all the orcs, all the trolls, only two catapults are remaining on the field. Darkness has been used, but what you want to buff with the darkness? You want to buff the trolls, I see you, okay? The Balrog is available, boys. AOD is on cooldown. Can Rohan finish off the bees? It's tanky bees, but I think it's not tanky enough. The ends are very... I mean, ends are literally almost immune to damage um, from, from arrows, and they have no fire arrows. Oh, that's going to be a beast treat if I've ever seen one. Uh, hold on, Mordor is trying to repair this. The catapults are coming, but they're going to be killed. The Mordor beast will be destroyed, but Rohan has not the money to, re to buy it. The outpost in the meantime has been taken down, and Mordor is going for a victory. If Mordor destroys that, it's game over, because Rohan cannot buy this. Rohan... No way this ended like that. We haven't even seen a clash. The event for the beast race, but Mordor had an outpost, and that's exactly what I meant... What more the player should be doing all the time. Try to destroy the castle without the need of your Balrog, then you can summon the Balrog to destroy any outpost you want. And it's exactly what happened. It's the Mordor base full. And it's also a very lucky situation because if Rohan would have the money to buy the castle from Mordor after destroying it, this game would have not been over yet. But it was a crazy ending for a Fiesta game. It was back and forth. Long game, by the way. We are talking here over an hour plus. And at the end of the day, Against the power of Mordor, there can be no victory. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like on this video and also subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.